again? We're live. We're live either way. Um, hello. This week on Loose Cannon, we are talking about Varix the Loyal. Uh, he has a very interesting story. He is the Elixni, the first Elixni that we met, the first friendly Elixni um, in the House of Wolves. That was that was a pretty big reveal. Does anyone like remember their um, yeah. their feelings when they like Bungie's like, oh yeah, and this guy, he's just gonna hang out in the reef. Um, you can talk. I was remember I was day. so excited. I thought this finally meant we were going to have like fallen NPCs yeah. in the game. Yeah, four years later. We, we don't even see him anymore. Still no NPC fallen. Yeah, it was, it was like everyone's like, "We're getting That's a fallen. True. We're getting a fallen player. We can play as a fallen. They're gonna be a new class. It's gonna be awesome." <laughs> Can't play as yeah. fallen, but we do at least have fallen allies now. Like that's a thing. It's a real thing now. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, we actually do have the spider now. I always forget about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Duh. I think yeah, everybody he's, goes he's pretty to cool. the Dreaming City and forgets about him. Mm. It's a bit like the, the Tangled Shore is the new farm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of. Remember that fallen walker that died in the last mission? The derelict. Right. The what? Last mission when you're going to kill Aldrin, there's a fallen walker that gets destroyed. Because oh, yeah. the fallen are fighting the scorn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the scorn. Uh, <laughs> okay, so. To, to kind of like get it right to Varix, um, mm. Varix is very old, right? Like, arguably, yeah. he's the oldest Elixni we know. I think. Well, part of the one of the points that's made in um, Varix's book um, is that he he believes that he is now the oldest living Elixni. Yeah, and that's you know he's. I mean, maybe maybe we should go into that since I think that's the first. Is that the first book? Um, so we are talking about no, the not. lore book Most Loyal now. Um, yes. Should have mentioned that. Yeah, if if you're going for Chronicler and you want to collect these lore books, uh, Most Loyal comes from the Tangled Shore while it's a Flashpoint doing, um, I got them by doing Heroic Adventures. Um, that's just me, though. So, Varix comes from the Elixni homeworld, like, f- the actual Elixni homeworld. He's not just... He wasn't born into the like the pirate slavehood of being a drek. Raised eyebrows. So yeah, uh, the, w- <laughs> one of the events that took place before the the traveler arrived. Well, I mean, we're pretty certain before the traveler arrived in our solar system, mm-hmm. is <laughs> there was this event on the Elixni homeworld called the Whirlwind. Mm-hmm. So that was where. The, uh, at some point, we, as far as we're aware, the Traveler blessed the Elixni in a similar way to the Traveler blessed us during our Golden Age. And some event happened which caused the Traveler to leave. It didn't stay and create kind of fallen guardians, you know. Um, mm. we, we don't really know what was different, but basically the Elixni were almost... Well, they were they were plunged into their own collapse. Yeah, but unlike with humans, a, a, a large number of them were able to escape and mm. travel travel through the the galaxy. And do you do you think they escaped, or do you think it's they just survived the collapse and then instead of like huddle, like that's kind of the difference mm-hmm. with humanity. We still had the traveler, so when mm-hmm. we the survivors of the collapse are here. They're just kind of like, well, there's the traveler. Let's go yeah. hang out under him. Whereas the elixir is like, well, where'd the traveler go? Let's go find it. Yeah, I think that's, it's kind of like, you know, if you imagine the traveler wasn't, wasn't around, they're not, there wouldn't really be, I can imagine dead orbit being a lot more popular, mm. you know? Yeah, um, exactly. Like, why would you, why would you hang around on this, kind of ruined planet um i mean that was the whole point of the ship that marisol was on it's like because originally we were told that the awoken were born out of ships escaping earth during the collapse yeah then we find out that they were literally just a ship not even connected to the collapse just like okay we're just gonna go elsewhere yeah. and not they were leaving them. and just yeah. got caught in it yeah exactly yeah um so yeah it, it, it you're right it might not be that they escaped the collapse it might be that they survived the collapse and then they moved on 
following that. I mm. shouldn't say the collapse either. I should say the whirlwind because yeah. they have a separate word for it and the collapse means something different. Um, mm. But yeah. Yeah, because technically we don't really know what the cause of the world, whirlwind was. They they talk about it like this. They, there's like a card that mentions uh, the sky fell away, stuff like that. It kind of yeah. sounds like something came to destroy their planet which i guess mm -hmm. that's what the darkness was coming to do to us as well but i mean mm -hmm. was it because yeah i i don't i mean the, you know to the reef that's a lot of planets it could have destroyed that uh, yeah that's true um I, I guess we still don't know we don't really know we know what the uh, what the rough objectives of a lot of the the races that we face are mm -hmm. um the hives objectives are probably most closely aligned with whatever the darkness wanted to do but that doesn't mean that they had the same goals yeah um the hive you know want to eliminate all other they want to prove that that, that they are the final shape that 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 mm -hmm. you know they want to destroy everybody else because according to their philosophy that is the the way that you know so so um existing is the fight to exist so that's probably similar to what the what the darkness wanted to do. I I, I imagine it wanted to wipe out humanity, but yeah. it's kind of interesting because the the fallen were there, so they're their own beast. The hive Crota showed up on the moon. Yeah, and then in, in, Oryx like didn't show up until after instantly. we killed Crota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. that could I mean it most likely shows that the hive never actually got to the Lixie homeworld. But then that just kind of leaves because the Vex are in our system. Who knows where else they are? And the Cabal have no reason to be elsewhere. So it literally could be something we don't even know about that caused it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always imagine that the Traveler, somehow when he got here, he maybe, I don't, you know, just using a scientific term, but because I don't know what it would be, but maybe the way he got here was some sort of wormhole and then everything just kind of collided in and he sucked in the Fallen with him somehow. And that that's why it was called the worm, the Whirlwind. That's that. That was mm -hmm. actually something that I said like a long time ago. Everyone was like, "Oh, well, what happened at the whirlwind?" Like, well, what if it was just kind of like a metaphorical whirlwind where it was just the traveler left and like civilization felt like it fell. It wasn't right. like an actual destruction that came onto them. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, when hit, like when you hit flush on a toilet, everything goes with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we actually have like the one of the like I guess the starting of the depressing points for Varix. Is that he actually saw the traveler disappear? Yeah, that's that's there. what I was just gonna say. Like he was there. Yeah. Um. So there is actually like two contenders, in my opinion, for the whirlwind. Uh, we from the Taken King. What was the um, uh, House of Stone guy? Um, drawing a blank. No, hang on. In the Taken King, the raid, we got weapons that were named after people that. Chel Theoretically, Chelchus. yeah, Chelchus, Chelchus, Chelchus. I wonder how it's actually pronounced, but either way, yeah. Um, so there is an um an artifact, Broken Crown, mm -hmm. and the the flavor text reads: Alexni songs still tell of Chelchus, Cal of Stone, who stood before the moor. Yeah, so it yeah uh, it Oryx the the King's Fall raid has these weapons that we believe are the ground up remains of people he's defeated because we see um mm -hmm. yasmin's uh, yasmin's the the de mm -hmm. demise yasmin's yeah. demise that's hard to say um <laughs> which was one of the reef paladins who died in the the battle of Sat saturn so it's kind of like oryx then must have Invaded the Elixney homeworld. If he could have killed Chelkis, then he must have been there, right? But then also we have, uh, f I think it's Feltrock. Is Feltrock the Elixney? Feltrock the Skull Piercer? Yes, I think so. Or is that or is that a Scion? No, I think Feltrock was the. Okay, maybe. Mm. It was a uh, Baron of Shanks. Secrus. So yes, Secrus right. is an Elixni, uh, Secrus the Baron of Shanks was an Elixni who became one of Callus's shadows. So what Callus does is he goes around and he says, I'm going to destroy your planet and I'm going to take the one person or in few cases, the group of people like he wants to do with Guardians 
um, who can benefit him. Could it have been mm-hmm. Callus coming in with a Leviathan, eating the planet like the sky fell away? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then Sekris yeah, was the chosen shadow, and the Elixni, who are like running away, go following the Traveler. Because the Traveler's like, well, I don't want to get eaten. I'm going to gonna leave. I, so while I think that, um, I definitely think the use of the word more kind of... Yeah, it, also that. It, it conjures up images of the Leviathan with its mm-hmm. massive well, mouth. Yeah. Before you go down there, we've had tons of items that were linked to the Fallen and the Traveler in our in our database for a while that had the word Maw in it. And if you look at them, like, for instance, Devouring Maw, I know that one for a fact looks like Fallen Tech, the helmet, and it was used in, uh, you know, D1. Yeah, but that it, was the... Um... It came from the uh, that strike the um, the sh- what was it? shank. <laughs> yeah, the big shank at the end. The what first time called? we saw a big shank, yeah. <laughs> which is lame because that shank was awesome. Where it was like you just you would you'd pop you'd like pop the cover up a little bit and then you'd break it off entirely. Like why don't all the big shanks do that? Like that's <laughs> just, that would just make them so much cooler. Like mm-hmm. the, the difference between a big shank and a small shank is one shank is bigger. Like give them give them some dynamic. I'm just saying. <laughs> you could drive a shank in yeah. that way. Shank Sparrow. No, but, no, but they should also do that. there was the uh, Warlock armor, the Eclipse Maw, and it talks about the, the Fallen as well. So, you know, the, if, if they were... Because it says, like, in one particular card... Let me see if I can find it real quick. Because this one always kind of messed with me. Let's see. Okay, here it is. When he came back, his gloves were still smoking. Of the fallen, nothing remained. So, I think, I think this warlock that was on the path to learning about the fallen, uh, kind of discovered their kind of you know their. Well, I, the helmet also reads: "If the Vex have secrets to offer, then I will learn from them the smoke of their ruin." And I remember a long time ago somebody trying to put together uh, how the fallen learned how to cycle either. Ether. Hmm. And if if maybe if the, if they were a noble race and they fell from that nobility and the traveler air quotes left them, then was it their own undoing that kind of caused that? I mean, and like you say, you point out Chelchis I mean, because in order for Chelsea, Chelsea to become a shadow, just like the other shadows, if you put that together, maybe he he kind of uh, betrayed his own people in a way, mm. or left them. Well, I don't think Chelsea became a shadow. I don't think there's any evidence of that, is there? No, uh, Chelsea no, would have died. No, you're right. He, yeah, he yeah. died. Sekris became but the shadow. Sekris I think you just got it confused. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Okay, sorry. I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm just... So the the thing is, I can imagine if the Traveler wasn't around, then the Leviathan would be a, a threat to the, the Elixni. Mm-hmm. But if the Traveler was still around and the Leviathan showed up, would the Traveler run from that? I mean... Maybe. I, 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 feel, I, I feel, think that's unlikely. I think the, the Traveler... The Traveler is just roaming anyway. Regardless it is, but I but I feel as though I don't know. I don't feel as though um, Callus poses a threat to the traveler. Yeah, really. He he's not. Yeah, I don't think he's a big enough threat. I think you're right. He's kind of like his. He's he might well turn up while the traveler's still around and say, you know, look. Ah, I don't know. He yeah, kind of well, he I mean, kind of seems to have an understanding of the traveler though, so he must have encountered it in some fashion. Well, right? maybe, but he but he he has an understanding of a lot of things that seems to have come through the scions and the oxa. Is that right? The oxa engine and various other things. Mm. So I mean, I feel as though you know, like he talks about knowledge. He seems to have some knowledge of the history of the hive, but there's well, absolutely no evidence that he was there through any of those events. He's been running around, um, much like, much like other, you know, other entities mm. that we've learned about. But he's he's probably encountered many different races in his mm-hmm. attempt to assemble the, the, you know, the perfect, 
army, if you will. Hmm. So he's probably encountered the fallen, uh, uh, you know, within his travels or, or maybe he was partly responsible for some of that. I don't know. I mean, we don't know. It's all speculation, mm. but, yeah. but yeah, I was just, I, I just thought that if, if I was just trying to tie it back to the fallen in some way, because if the fallen, if their demise, if their fall from nobility happened and it was, and, and it was a whirlwind, I mean, don't you think that there's some significance to the wordplay that they're using? Like if the traveler was with them, but they, they felt be, they felt abandoned by the traveler. Is that correct? For the, for the most part, for the fallen race, didn't they feel like the, the traveler left them because they, they talk about pursuing the, the great machine that's theirs and they want it back. Just, just in, I, I feel as though the, the majority of Elixney that we encounter, um, feel as though humanity stole the traveler to an extent i don't well, think they have this belief that the traveler left them even i mean maybe, maybe some of them do i don't know but you know like that the, there must be this when you think about the twilight gap and you know the, the goal of the majority of the fallen since they arrived in our solar system it has been to reclaim the traveler right which leads me to believe that they have this perception that if they wipe out humanity, then the traveler will be theirs, which it definitely isn't the case. You know, we can see that from the from the the um, everything that happened with Gaul and the Red War. You know, right. the Cabal came, they conquered the last city, but the tra the traveler had no interest in giving Gaul the light. I I would suspect the same is true of of the the Elixir as well. But see, but see, here's. Yeah, and I think you're right. And the one key thing that I, I, I want to focus on with what you said is if they think that they can get the traveler back, m maybe they feel or maybe their flaw is that they feel that the traveler is a possession almost as if it, they can reclaim him like a servitor. Mm -hmm. Well, they, call it, the, they yeah. call it the great machine. Mm -hmm. So right. I, I think that, that they don't perhaps that didn't used to be the case, but of the fallen that have survived the whirlwind, it does feel as though the mm. ones that are left have the the kind of the impression that this is a device. You know, it's not it's not a there's no intelligence. I mean, I'm I'm jumping to conclusions. I, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying this is the case. I'm just saying well, it's a possibility. But right, but there's something there's an undercurrent there that ties to Varix because Varix ultimately knows more than most fallen. Yeah. Mm. So I just want to read this this little piece. Uh, it comes mm -hmm. from the book um, Most Loyal. It's Unknown Space. Um, so Unknown Space, first of all, is where the Trials of the Nine, the Third Spire, is, and it's type. It's it's there's text in the format of one of the nine speaking. It's like all capitals, um, mm -hmm. and it says, uh, "For you, the Great Machine is a dark mirror," which is a thing that Zer says, kind of mm -hmm. pulling it into the nine is going through a little bit and then he said he's like recalling his past he and his fellow scribes passing judgment in their soft furred robes then the whirlwind the elders torn apart the pillaging of the house Varix kneeling before a window staring up at the great machine watching it vanish then the long journey in the darkness so See, that just that kind of feels describes like he's being pulled in <laughs> to something i don't know why what do you mean pulled in like when he says he's he watched the traveler leave and then a long darkness. Well, uh, I, he, I wouldn't he's, say he's that. Like he's listing he's, yeah. events as they happened, which is why I say like the um they were happy, they were just in their furred robes, passing judgment. Uh, then the whirlwind, which led to, it's like then the whirlwind, comma the elders torn apart, comma the pillaging of the house. So that's like the whirlwind consisted of the elders being torn apart and the houses being pillaged. Ver then it's Varix kneeling before a window, staring up at the great machine, watching it vanish, and it's like period, period, uh, the long journey in the darkness. So it's it's kind of like saying these are separate events that have happened. He was kneeling before a window staring at the great machine then it vanished and then he had a long journey in the darkness which was um with the wolves he his flight to run with the wolves his plea to skolas 
et cetera, et cetera. So like essentially the whirlwind happened, like crap started hitting the fan and the, the, the traveler just poofed away. Mm-hmm. So whatever it was, it's very much, um, but it didn't, it didn't instantaneous. Oh yeah. Okay. So the, uh, of the remaining fallen, the ones that were originally on wherever the fallen are from, are they, do we believe that they're completely wiped out? I and feel like there was the something that, that said that they aren't. The remainders? Oh, okay. And I think it was kind of talking Johnson? about in there that the Kells were all that was really left. Like the Kell of the houses were really the only ones left who remember like the hierarchy and everything. And not all the Kells are gone because of the guardians. And so in the, in the item, um, I, I just feel like if if they were to start leaving, like after the whirlwind happened, there would at least be some splinter groups who are like, you can go chase the traveler. Yeah. We're just going to yeah. go off and be our own thing. You know, like they're not all going to be aligned on the same goal of finding the traveler again, especially after the whirlwind just happened and the traveler took off. Like, obviously, some are going to be more devoted, but others are going to be more like spurning the traveler, kind of like the uh, the trinary bar, uh, star cult. Right. It's kind of interesting because in that card you have a specific line that doesn't say the houses fell. It says the house. Hmm. It kind of makes it sound like the fallen a were specific unified. specific house. Yeah. Mm. So it's like either he's talking about house judgment or maybe all the fallen were one single house. And when the elders fell, they well, all split into their separate groups. Would that not be but, the house of elders? Like like a specific highest house? Like the house mm-hmm. of houses? The Kell of Kells? Well, I mean, we, we know that certain we know that there were multiple houses pre whirlwind. Yeah, most of them came yeah. pre whirlwind. Yeah, I think I the think... only one that we actually have confirmation being formed post whirlwind is the House of Exile. Yeah. So I, I feel as though if it is talking about a specific house, I mean, I would have thought you know, given the name, I would have thought House of Kings was was one of the more so is House of Elders, is that a, is that a term that's actually no, used? No, I just said okay. that. Because it, it right. says, uh, what does it say? The elders torn apart the pillaging of the house. So it kind of feels like the house of the elders torn apart the pillaging of mm-hmm. their house. Like the house of, the, of their house. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, what, no, from I think, what I think we that... read, it sounds like the original Fallen Society was very political. Yeah. And very religious. Yeah. So if the traveler leaves and that's essentially their god machine, then the elders are going to collapse because that basically all the houses are going to revolt because it's like the god's gone. What's the point of you guys? It's it's the and pillaging the of his rich. house. It's the pillaging of house judgment. Mm. Like. Yeah, and it kind of happened to us too here. I mean, we had the the dark age. Yeah. Yeah, and I I don't think it has to be. I I would I would be hesitant to kind of um put any kind of religious overtone onto it because i don't while while we know in the current form the fallen worship machines that's really because the machines give them ether well, and it, i i would i would be hesitant to say that that was true during their golden age you know um most likely there is some religious form of that because if a giant god machine shows up to your solar system they don't, and helps they don't you, call it, it be some well, no, I mean, but we don't. I I still would would be hesitant to suggest that they don't call it the god machine. They call it the great machine, which I would argue, you know, doesn't necessarily. I mean, that there's no there's there may be religious over like overtones, but I would I would be hesitant to. In, kind of suggest that in the same card it says his flight to run with the wolves his plea to skolas the pact with fickrel to sever calyx prime and secret it away the prime vanishing and again fickrel on the horizon preparing to give the fallen what they so rightfully deserve so it, it does kind of sound like fickrel fickrel is very much against the religious aspect of worshiping machines mm-hmm. and he's already plotting to separate the machines from the house of wolves and that's so i mean probably because he's learned so much from 
you know, well, the, well, that's what I mean. I fe- it feels the like the the whirlwind happened, and and thick roll specifically is going. We don't need these machines. We will find another way. We will become something mm-hmm. more. We will sever these ties with these mm-hmm. machines that we worship, because it, it that that's his whole that's his whole his whole thing to sever the ties from worship. And in this card, it's it's saying right after Whirlwind, he's already trying to sever those ties. So at the very least, there was mm-hmm. some religious uh, worship to the machines. You know, like, you brought up a good maybe not greatly, score, but I mean, would think about how how the one uh, the one what's his name? The one that tears up servitors, of uh, the hangman, the hangman. So if you you know, they used to think of. Well, I guess in this group, maybe they don't all share the exact same philosophy, but they tolerate it. So they went from, you know, making servitors in the image of a traveler to tearing them apart and dis- disassociating themselves from the traveler altogether. Yeah. I wonder when. So when did servitors. Which came first, when... the servitor or the traveler? Well, to an extent, yeah. And, and what, can, like, you know, is ether something that I think I, I would love to know what what the what the order of events is what you know, is their if... pre golden age existence yeah right, right personally I've I've actually thought about that personally I think ether was a natural abundant source but it mm. was very it was like any natural abundant source like we have it we use it we love it but when the traveler well, comes and we can kind of sever that tie of like needing to do this process of getting it this like this harder process of like having it and owning it and we can just have the machine that makes it magically it's like oh this mm-hmm. is so much great this is so much greater mm-hmm. it's like if the traveler came t- today and they're like it's like hey you don't need fossil fuels anymore mm-hmm. you have cars that run on oxygen and release mm-hmm. oxygen when they're done mm-hmm. well or you know what whatever. i've looked up the word ether many times and i've gone down many rabbit holes in fact i've even read almost the entire toland john toland's uh, I don't know if you call it a book. I mean, but anyway, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even read that because Tolan doesn't know anything about the the fallen. He's all about the hive. No, I know, but in the word, in the usage of the word ether in our our in the real world, um, the the basic synopsis of it is that it's the the caring anima. It is your soul. It's not your soul, but it is the energy that your soul is made of. Huh. Neat. So let's just let's just assume that there you know there was some kind of a wordplay with the ether and the way that you describe a fallen's death and the and the way that they describe the fallen's death you can actually see their their ether escape their body and then they they resurrect one another in a way. Hmm. Well, the ether escapes, but is it is it escaping their body or is it escaping the tanks that they have strapped on their backs? Well, you can well you can see a fallen now in D two when they die. You can see their whole yeah, the whole but of themselves but bleeding. only when you get a headshot, which is like breaking the tank. So right? then they so the, what did they do? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like did unless unless we're like unless we're breaking open the tank, we don't see the ether release. I think it's like the same thing as killing Cabal, where we kill them and their suits. Yeah, the the oil, oil. the pressure yeah. oil, like ejects Which out. Okay, so if we shoot that, topic. then yeah. Ether comes oh my out. God. yeah. So that's what I'm. That's, I, I just I don't think the ether will. Actually, I know the ether can come out from the body because that's that's what Varix actually does in the Prison of Elders when he gets a um. When he gets like a fallen to capture, he has a servitor drain them of their ether to make them weaker. Mm-hmm. So actually, yeah, it it could be taken out at the very least. Do they make? Do they? Is that okay? So, but the ether is vital to their size too, correct? Yeah, the more ether you get, the larger you get. The less ether you get, the smaller you get. I'm assuming there's a a point where it is less than. Uh. But like, like this is the point where you stop growing. This is the point where you stop shrinking. And but would they would they ever shrink? Yeah, they will never shrink past like six foot, like five foot, whatever they are. Whatever size a drake is. Yeah, a drake. How tall is a how tall is a scorn? Uh, the scree. Standard is five feet. 
The scree bar are an interesting uh, question. They're kind of like contorted though. Like their backs are all like arched up. Like yeah. they look, they only look like they're four feet, but I think it's because of like, they're just like really messed up. Yeah. I think it's hard to tell the size of certain things in, um, in the destiny world. Yeah. Cause we don't even know how tall we are. Yeah. Well, you know, in the halo world, a grunt is six foot tall. No, it's fucking not. What? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That blows your mind, doesn't it? That is not okay. You just don't realize it because they're so hunched over and they've got that big machine tied to their back. You know, their 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 source of ether. <laughs> they drink helium. They they breathe helium. So I, you know, another another meaning of the word ether is in the in the nineteenth century people were trying to figure out how how does light travel Mm -hmm. and one of the suggestions for the for the the medium through which light traveled was luminiferous ether Mm -hmm. so you know i i know that there there are associations with like um the soul and things like that but this was like a scientific i mean there there wasn't any evidence for it but this was like a Okay, so uh, in in early forms of science, there. Not to get too on, on like a religious topic, but just in, mm-hmm. in in a nutshell, the the earliest forms of silent science were in pursuit of 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 the knowledge of God of what was the ultimate higher being, and so they would use a lot of terminology that they had at their disposal, in ways to to describe and define phenomenon or mm. things that they were learning and and so they had to they had to appropriate a lot of the terminology so that it was widely adapted and so words like ether luminous ether words mm. like uh like uh, celestial beings and and then you know and then they had to incorporate the old mythology as well so well, that, I mean, I don't think that's that's quite fair, though, really, because I mean, if you look at this was in this was in the eighteen eighty up until eighteen eighty seven, when the, the when the experiments were carried out to prove that ether didn't exist, it was still considered a possible explanation for the movement of light, and that yeah, you know you you've got to take into consideration what was happening at the time of the turn of the century. That was a huge awakening for many people. In fact. Lots of people were into, and even Destiny alludes to it as well with the with the uh, HBD quotes when she talks, or when they talk about um, uh, the war mind, uh, Rasputin. Anyway, it, to tie this back, at the turn of the century, there was a great awakening. A lot of people were playing with seances and old. Uh, there, there was a huge awakening. Lots of people were traveling and they were learning about other cultures and they were bringing the the folklore, mythologies, the the different practices that people were using across the entire globe, and they were kind of they they had these understandings, and they were like, wait a minute, this is really these energies and these these ties to why phenomenon happened. So they were spreading this stuff around, and uh, they would even have secret little uh, meetings and and seances, and it wasn't an evil thing like. Like we have this interpretation in our modern culture that that was evil, but it was just a, a practice that they would do, and it was fun. So they had tarot readings and and magic tricks and shows and these underground speakeasies and stuff. Hmm. And I mean, and that's true for certain people, but I, I don't think that's necessarily true for the 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 like the scientists in the eighteen hundreds. Mm. I think were predom- were predominantly not doing those kinds of things no they, they really. kept themselves separate for for a reason so that they could but but you've got to understand that the the terms and the and the words that they used they had mm. they had to you know they had to use what they had basically i mean this was a great well i mean i'm not i'm not disagreeing all, all i'm saying is that i i'm not i i guess this is this is an al- alternative from if you think of the bungee riders and where they might have been taking their terminology from, it might be that they were they were taking it from, you know, the more historical, the older term ether, which as you mentioned is kind of related to, you know, a very rudimentary scientific understanding, but they could be 
taking it from from a later source and using it in in a you know it, they could be referencing something that's a, a bit more recent mm -hmm. and actually doesn't have necessarily those same connotations you know and i i guess just because the reason that i'm that i'm that i'm wondering that is because it's about light you know mm -hmm. this this term luminiferous ether is talking about the 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 um the medium through which light with a lowercase l travels which maybe is also maybe, light in uppercase just saying well yeah i mean i mean maybe that's that's kind of what they were thinking when they used the term ether that maybe this is this is a term it's some there are here's, there are people who have kind of suggested yeah the people who have suggested that ether is like ether is to the fallen as light is light to guardians. Is to guardians, right? Mm. Well, I think that's the that I think that's the important thing that they're trying. That the nail that they're wanting to drive home is that the fallen are different, and, mm -hmm. and in order for them to be different, their light can't be called light. Yeah. But light is in all things. Right. Yeah. So, like, I mean, they have yeah. light. I, I, I see like where like ether. It's kind of like almost shared like light, but it's not light. Like ultimately it isn't because we don't need light to live. Light doesn't make us grow. Light doesn't make us, sh lack of light doesn't make us shrink. Like mm -hmm. you can look at Eris Morn, you can look at, uh, well, I guess Osiris, he would have more light, right? Mm -hmm. Like arguably he'd, he'd have like a lot of light, whatever that would even be mean i don't know i think it's still debatable i think it i think it could still be i don't uh, think varix uh I, ever uses the word light uh dancing yeah. beer i think that the as far as the as far as what we know uh as far as the mm. light goes that's what we know i mean it, it even for the hive you know one thing is traded for another and it's a part of their logic which is flawed but then it's not because it's an argument and so in order for an argument to exist it has to have something to argue against i so think if, if light is 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 an argument then it is in everything but then again it's not it's not necessary not necessarily the reason <laughs> i think uh ether is most easily designated as kind of their equivalent of oxygen but more than like it's it's oxygen plus like it's not just the thing that they breathe it's like you know because like they they constantly get insect is an insult for a uh they constantly get tossed around with like this like kind of insectoid uh this feeling of like being a bug and a thing with insects is the more oxygen in the atmosphere the literally the larger they can get like prehistoric mm -hmm. bugs were fucking enormous like that's a thing <laughs> so it's kind of like an elixir getting more ether makes them bigger it's kind of like this shared relation i think they're i think it's like a, a very multifaceted it's very I've never thought of the, that the way that you just describe it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good point. It's very, it's very uh, pointedly picked. It's a very pointedly mm. picked word where they're like, it means this, it means this, it means this, well, it means this, well, and we're we're just like kind of grasping at a few well, listen, of its meanings. They've got, they've got, they've got history. I mean, they've got tons of knowledge, and and they've picked and pulled from what's the best writing that they've ever learned you know read in their lives and and these writers have have they've kind of come up with the concept of what's the best thing that we can use here you know i mean it's just they've got tons of shared knowledge uh, about these things so yeah they're going to pick and choose the best of it all and what works you know mm. so varix yeah varix was there varix left with the uh, House of Wolves mm -hmm. and um, as um, Dancing Viru brought up he was with Skolas um, Skolas mm -hmm. was then defeated by Mara Varix joined with Mara essentially Varix has a um, Varix has a very tragic life well it's interesting going through the the which card was it the first card talked about it in the book. The un 
the unknown space one I was going to say. Oh. You know, who was the original Kel of the House of Wolves? I can't remember his name now. Um, Varixus. Oh, who... uh, uh, yeah. yeah. R- Rixus isn't... I don't think Rixus... Uh, no, he doesn't mention It's mentioned. He is pleased yeah. to Skolas, his pack with thick roll. I mean, he's pleased to Skolas. I don't know. Is this saying he pled with Skolas to join the House of Wolves following the Whirlwind? Or is this his later is this is this is this something closer to the 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 reef wars i don't think it's closer i I think it's closer to the reef wars but i don't think it's as close as you're saying Mm. uh his his flight to run with the wolf so he joins the wolves his pleas Mm -hmm. to skolas who back then was skolas the rabid his pleas with skolas to stop being such you know such a jerk and then, like, <laughs> Skolas doesn't listen. His pack with Fickroll to sever Calix Prime and secret it away. So yeah. it's like, it's it's a progression of his time coming to the system. Mm. And then ultimately, when the, um, the Reef Wars happens, uh, he betrays them. Because he doesn't, he, he's got this history of hating Skolas. And it all comes t- to the point where it's like, okay, well, Skolas is going to win. I need to I need to do something. I need to make it so mm-hmm. Skolas doesn't win. And the only other person there was Mara, so he sided with Mara and gave her the victory. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of it comes from like Varix is really the only person who had a loyalty to like House Judgment. Like we yeah. don't see anyone else from House Judgment, so He's he the last. seems to be like yeah. So he has this completely different idea of what the Fallen used to be and what they should be. Mm-hmm. And when Whirlwind happened, it essentially turned into, I mean, a collapse where all the houses started fighting each other. It just fell into pieces because of the machine, the great machine left. So Varix the whole time is trying to get the Fallen back to that point. Like he never stops doing that. So he's kind of thinking the long game as well, where he's trying to get the Fallen back to what they were before. And so when he gets to the reef and sees Marasov, he sees that she's probably the best way to kind of help that and get them back to where they should be. So do you think that would be in part uh, problematic for him now that Mara is not really around? Well, she's back. She's just, she like, what is it? She has to like be in hiding. I guess she has to stay in the court because, uh, it's the best place to be right now, I guess. Cause she said that she's fighting. I don't know. She's, she said that she's fighting with us to like yeah. combat the curse and everything so i feel like that's yeah. just like her operation center i guess i actually loved that she was kind of like lounging back in her chair and she's yeah. like yes i'm also fighting <laughs> it's like, are you are you though? all right i mean i haven't seen you with the gun yeah but all right but she's, Ooh, she mentions like petra petra my wrath like yeah the wrath does the fighting for the queen so she can be peaceful that's an interesting mm. dynamic i mean yeah, I guess. To literally have I mean, a person we do be see your in anger. The most like... little book. <laughs> we see Varric talking about how with Mara gone and like everyone gone, like he still is kind of loyal to Petra, but not to the same level. Hmm. So we see his kind of distrust a little bit of the Awoken, where he's not as loyal to them because they're not Mara. Mm-hmm. So we think... saw something special in Mara. I oh. think Varric's loyalty has all. Uh, no, so. Var- to me, Varix's loyalty, while it was to Marasov, it was to the Elixni. Yeah. Like, so, in the same. This is the... I just want to say it because it really uh, helps your, your argument. In the same card, again, Unknown Space, you will. Your will must remain your own, he told himself. You are the last Elixni of House Judgment. The destiny of your people is in your hands. You will save them. You will stand for the fallen. He's telling that to himself. You know, so. Yeah. I think all of the, the, the cards tabs entries whatever pages Mm -hmm. in the the most loyal book tell a story of someone who has seen so much loss Mm -hmm. and when when he realizes that he he has faith in others to be able to save his people that that, that's how i see varix he his his loyalty is to his own people and he he has found others that he thinks will save his people 
He thought that Morisov would save his people. In um, which card was it? Uh, I can't remember which one it was now. Splinter and Bone. Is it Splinter and Bone? The one where he contacts the no. The one where he contacts the kings. How's uh, tries oh, to find um. Job undone. Job undone. Krask. Yeah. Yeah. He tries to contact Krask, Kell of Kings, and then he discovers that Krask is dead, and then he realizes there's nobody else left who yeah. remembers the 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 golden age of the Elixni. Hmm. And to me, that's the the like breaking point in Varix's story, yeah. where he's he's always tried to find other people that could save his people, and so, now he realizes that there isn't anybody else left. Everybody else who's left, he, and maybe unfairly, but, but he, he considers them savages. He, he, yeah. he, does, he thinks they've lost too much to be able to understand what it was to be Elixni rather yeah, than there's Fallen. There's a pretty big spectrum. I mean, everything from, you know, Golos to Tanix to, I mean, there's a pretty wide spectrum of mm -hmm. what, who, who could, he, who could he ally with, with, who could he just be like forget y'all but at the same time he's he's so opposed to you know Skolas by his standards was too rabid yeah and I think the majority of the the kind of leaders within the, the fallen that we've seen since Skolas have been worse yeah you know if you look at the um the devils and the splices Axis. Yeah, he was completely opposed to everything that they yeah. did. If you look at the scorn, he's completely opposed to Fickrell and everything Even more that, so. that. Yeah, and you know he he considered. Uh, I don't know how he feels. I, I don't know exactly how he feels about Tanix, but I don't think he's a big fan of Tanix either. Tanix especially kills fallen. I think, I think yeah, Tanix was a pretty key point for him. I mean, we saw Tanix. I think that was kind of in the throes of, of you know, with so with Skolas, he had a pretty visceral reaction, like, okay, this guy, I can't, I, he, I despise him, right? Mm -hmm. But with Tanix, it was just unlawliness. I mean, he came from House Judgment, right? So you would uh, kind of assume mm -hmm. that he likes the natural order, and he protects the fundamental philosophies of the fallen in their in their truest form, whatever that was. He believes that he needs to restore the fallen to their what he considers to be their highest graces, which would be, um, you know, nobility and, and order and and right in, in, in his mind, right from wrong. Right. But Tanix hmm. was off the rails in, in his eyes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No, uh -huh. he has no I mean, he kneels to no one. Right. That's the thing that we always heard about in the, in the strike. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of weird because I feel like Ferrix in the lore kind of has some respect for Tanix. Like he still thinks what he's doing is wrong and like he needs to be put down. But mm. there's several instances where it kind of seems like he at least has a respect for Tanix in some form. That that might be true because he's not, you know, like for all he's kind of he's not on the same side as as Varix. He's not like a monster, you know. He's not rabid like Skolas. Mm. He's not, you know. Um, Kind of modifying really himself with all of this crazy. Oh, he was like modifying himself. I wonder if that's part. Oh yeah, of course he was modifying that. himself. Yeah, 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 he was more machine, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. The endless because he died multiple and times and too. Parts and all like that. even before Siva. Yeah. C Cade killed Tanix, mm -hmm. and then Tanix came back and, and came killed back Andal. Yeah. yeah, no, it's crazy. Yeah. You think but, we'll see him again? <laughs> no, he's after after Siva. He's definitely done. But. Nah. Um, He's got endless troves of legs just, just to uh, kind of like put up a timeline of Varix's like hopes for people to save him or save them mm -hmm. or lead them or whatever term you want to do. Like give it. It's like he was in House Judgment and he had the Traveler. The Traveler left, so he joined the House of Wolves. House of Wolves has Skolas the Rabbit, and he's like, oh, I don't really like Skolas the Rabbit. So he goes with Fickroll trying to follow whatever Fickrell's preaching, saying he's going to make the fallen uh, Elixni great again. Like, he's going <laughs> to... Um, it never gets old. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I, forgot about, I forgot about Mega. But Will so, like, Fickrell's preaching his, his, his thing about how he's going to, like, 
rise them back up but very quickly that fail that falls through where it's like oh Fickrell is actually doing stuff that I don't like either so then from House of Wolves he goes to Mara Mara just abandons him not really caring sacrificing herself for her ploy to save the humanity human doesn't involve the fallen and then as Baxter said his last hope was to get Krask who is the original Kell of Kings from the old world but Krask was already taken out by Fickroll. So it's just that breaking point, you know? He has no one else to turn to. He has to turn to himself. So do you really think he's going to break and this is him just... He already unraveling? did. So so let's go down that road. Yeah, yeah, let's... Uh, yeah. So when, when Varix, uh teamed up with Mara, she had given him the title of Warden of the Prison of Elders, um, uh, he would oversee everything. He, um, uh, you know, he was in charge of it, holding the prisoners, etc. When a strong Elixni came in, he would have an, uh, a servitor drain them of their ether. In the case of, um, post Mara, he was still the warden. Now, uh, Petra was in charge. He, he got closer with Petra too. Like they, they definitely became friends. So I can't imagine... Mm. It was easy. Like he was very ingrained in the um, the reef culture, because when Aldrin was captured, he was like, "Whoa, what are you doing? Why are you throwing yeah. Aldrin in prison? This isn't right. He's a prince." I think it says he that he bows to him as well at one yeah. point. Like he, he right? still calls him my prince and stuff like that. Like yeah, he he sees Aldrin as Aldrin, even though everyone else is like something's wrong with Aldrin. He can't see him as anything else. He's like so, like focus on Aldrin Mara these are the two that like these are this is my Kel and this is my Archon and I I listen to them because Varix is a, a docked thing you know and docked things just follow their leaders and they're subservient you know another note is to to pull back on w another reason why I would think that his ultimate goal is to restore order and nobility is that like what you mentioned it took him a while to uh, kind of uh, except Petra because she was kind of a radical for for a little while but she grew up you know she kind of matured in the mm -hmm. in the in the uh, reef yeah she she got a little less crazy a little less um aggressive a little more calm calm down uh so through the books of through the book most loyal we see Varix's um loyalty being questioned by Aldrin. At this point, Aldrin is seeing the visions of Mara, and he's he's very confused. He's like, what do you mean you see Mara? Who are you talking to? He's trying to save Aldrin. He thinks there's a way to save Aldrin. Uh, Fickrell is captured as well. His, his servitor tries to drain Fickrell of, its, of his ether, and it only destroys the servitor because he has corrupted ether. All the all the dead fallen are now getting infected with this corrupted ether that's seeping out, and like that's essentially the beginning of the scorn, I guess, like or uh, mm. more of the scorn. That's, yeah. that's like that's how they that's how um that's how they are. You take a dead fallen and pump it full of corrupted ether, and it comes back as a scorn. Is that how it happens? That's that's how it's kind of being presented. They didn't explicitly say that, but like with um in the story mission when we go to fight through Fickrell and Aldrin, uh, Fickrell's like I should go with you or I should do this, and Aldrin's like no, this is my fight, and he goes but you're not of the ether, I can't revive you. Hmm. So it's you know scorn scorn are scorn are created through corrupted ether, and it seems to be directly a dead fallen pumped with mm. corrupted ether yeah right well, there's kind of an interesting cool. well, i was gonna go a different one um there's kind of an interesting thing that i, I saw in there because there's the card where it's aldrin actually talking to grask mm -hmm. yeah and grask was basically sitting there it's like you need to make the fawn whole again like that so, was the whole card it's like, uh that's that's uh America. from the forsaken prince right just so like people that like want to like look into this that type of that those parts were coming from the forsaken prince which is following aldrin take over the kings right guardian i think you muted again <laughs> i'm still here 
<laughs> well, I asked you a question. Like, is that from Forsaken Prince or is that from Most Loyal? Well, I was trying to find the card real quick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because Most Loyal focuses more on, uh, from my memory, more on Varric's, uh seeing Fickroll be alive, sending Cade after Fickroll again, and just being like very conflicting about who he follows. Because Aldrin essentially tells. Uh, is telling Varric's like, hey, I'm seeing Mara. She needs your help. You are loyal to her. And so that's that's the crowbar they use to influence and manipulate. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's that they thought if Aldrin thought if he told Varric's helping me is helping Mara that he would listen because mm-hmm. he believed that Varric's was most loyal to Mara, which I mean I guess up to that point he was. Yeah. So he's become unhinged is where we were going. Yeah, it's it's all looping back. Well, do you, sorry, who's become unhinged? Varys. Do you think he's become unhinged? Well, maybe well, not unhinged, explore, but is maybe what is he do? Because like Anon brought up a good point. What is his mm. breaking point? You yeah. know, he sees that there's nothing left of his noble, noble his yeah. noble species, the fallen. Right. Mm-hmm. But but I wouldn't say that he's he's unhinged. I think he has clarity now. He mm. has realized it's not that he's gone in. He's not. He hasn't like you know. Yeah. Oh well, screw this. I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. He's he's yeah, realized that he's realized that he has he he has no choice but to accept the role of Cal. He he doesn't want it. He, you know he doesn't mm. want to be the person. He's trying to find every other person who who he thinks is capable. Of saving his people and they're all dead yeah. and so he says right well you know this is it like i have to take responsibility now it, it's up to me i'm the one who needs to lead my people yeah to actually kind of touch on that after the after the attack on saturn when aldrin or aldrin died he also mm-hmm. inherited the crows he became master of crows as well as the mm-hmm. warden of the prison of elders and he used the crows to go seek out who he thought could become the kel of kells he never he never once looked at himself and said i should be kel of kells he was always like i'm just a dreg but I can find the Kel of Kells because I remember the old ways. I can find someone else because clearly Mara has failed. I can find someone else to save my people. And he found no one again. And it's just, I, I, I have really mixed feelings about what he did. Hmm. I feel like the one thing that always kind of bothers me about this is, that he is kind of he's left and he's kind of gone on that righteous path of I'm gonna save the Elixney, mm-hmm. I'm going to become the Kel. Um, but at the same time, he then lets the scorn loose in the prison. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. escape, very just, like, very mixed feelings. I don't understand that part. He unless he's just kind of hoping if they escape, then Kate will show up and the Guardians will show up and destroy the scorn, which is exactly what happened. I I don't think that's why he did it. I think he felt he felt that, in my opinion, with Varric. So, for those who don't know, Aldrin and Fickroll and the scorned barons were captured. Captured. They were held tight in the prison. They were perfectly fine in there. Nothing was going to happen. But Varric decided, "I'm going to be the Kell. I'm going to save my people. I'm going to do what needs to be done." And he looks at Aldrin, and he sees Aldrin is only trying to do the same thing i'm going to do what needs to be done i'm going to save mara i'm going to take the light and the dark and release her from whatever trap uh he believed illin had put her in and so but how kind of like uh I mean, he has no i mean they're you know who who's gonna who, who is he gonna get to do that with him Some well that's pros? well that's what i'm saying varix looks at is looking at Aldrin, seeing Aldrin try to do the same thing that Varix has decided to do, and he he feels like empathy towards that. He's like, well, I'm going to save my people. I'm going to let you save yours. He doesn't understand the greater scheme of things. He doesn't understand that Aldrin's being tricked. He doesn't understand. I'm, I'd am i be amazed if Varix actually knew that Riven existed. You know, mm. like, yeah. he, he I mean, doesn't... W- to be honest, we if it hadn't been for the crisis in the Dreaming City... We would not know. Yeah, exactly. Like, why would I? I don't think the Awoken would ever 
Yeah, if it Dark was Lord literally just secrets. Yeah. if it was literally just Aldrin went nuts and started killing uh killing people and killed Cade and then we're like, "All right, well we got revenge. Let's go back to the tower." And there was like no taken in the dreaming city. They'd be like, "Okay, bye." <sighs> Thank God. <Yeah. laughs> was was Aldrin privy to a lot of that knowledge? Aldrin found Riven originally. No, yeah, I, I mean, mean Ald- I, I mean I know I know that he helped capture Riven as what was it a present for Mara yeah uh, Mara said that she wanted to have a power unlike anyone else so that she could be a leader so that she could become a god etc and that power was through Riven so that's what I mean does was Aldrin aware of how Mara was using that uh no Mara kept her use of Riven secret from Aldrin but Aldrin was aware that Riven was being used. I'm sure he was able to put two and two together and be like, okay, well, clearly Riven built this massive city here yeah. randomly on a rock. I mean, I would, there's a, there were supposedly a ton of Ahamkara in the Dreaming City. Also that, yeah. I mean, but, I think I think Aldrin... So, so Mara went to great lengths to keep Riven her insulated. Yeah. You know, like she she understood the the damage that Ahamkara could do, especially and Riven. Especially because Riven. Let the other ones die, but kept Riven. Yeah. Yeah. Because that only made her that much more powerful. She's the right. only one with an Ahamkara now, and she's the only one that's allowed to talk to Riven. She's the only one that knows anything about Riven. She's locked Riven away in a cage that she's wished uh, her into. You know, like. So it's most likely, like you said, that Varix isn't aware of. That. Yeah, like he see he all he's seeing is Aldrin trying to save his people, and he's he's saying I'm leaving the prison of elders to save my people. I'm gonna let you save yours. So is he? No, I have a weird tangent. Um, so we know Aldrin is being twisted by Riven. Yes, and he's had contact with Riven. Yes. So do we ever find out where the ability come from? Because it just comes from Aldrin. What ability? To resurrect the guard, like resurrect the score. Yeah. So oh, there yeah. the, the definitely seems to be a connection between the um, the dark ether. Is there another word for it? I can't corrupted. remember. The corrupted right. ether and kind of the taken. You know. Um, I, I, I was I, thinking. I, yeah. Uh, so, my chain of thought was back to that card about the kings, mm-hmm. where we literally have Aldrin taking over the house of kings. And it's talking where Krask is looking at him. It's like, you can do what I cannot. You can make the the fallen whole again. Like mm-hmm. You can bring them all under one banner. And there, down there it says, he will do it. He'll gain shoulder, soldiers and ships and resources to begin the search. Yeah. So it's like, it kind of seems like For he's... Mara. And we do see the fallen in D2 all come under one banner. Hmm. So even though it is for Mara, it kind of seems like he's still trying to kind of get that goal of bringing the fallen together. So he is taking a step closer to what the fallen need. Well, Aldrin Aldrin doesn't care about the fallen. No, he was only using, he's using them, but he's getting them. It's still kind of like an adverse, like it's a step. He was was taking advantage of what, of what Krask wanted. Not like, Hey, I want to bring you guys together. He was just like, Oh, you guys want to be brought together and you think I can do it. Well, I will do that. And you will be my army. You know, like, but he does that. So he, do, I mean, he does whether he, like, wanted it is not for personal reasons. Like, he did bring the fallen together, and he did yeah. bring them under one banner. Ultimately, like, he yeah. did establish that. So, what if when he comes in contact with the Riven, like, since Riven is a wish dragon, he somehow he makes a wish to have soldiers and an army, and that would be pretty kind. Cool. That wish comes along with the fallen being free of the traveler. Well, so um, that happens, but then Riven twists it, and that's how we get the scorn. So uh, two things: um, Fickrel's power was described as matching like the readings found in the EDZ, kind of talking about um, the Traveler as well as the Taken. I feel like it's it's a both mm-hmm. light and dark type of deal, um, and then. Um, Fickrel, like- Fickrel specifically, because Cade did kill Fickrel. He shot him with a golden gun through the chest. He was dead and die, or he was dying and left. He was dying and left to death, left to die. When Aldrin came across him, 
uh, Riven was already like whispering to Aldrin, like appearing to Aldrin, like kind of uh, in his head. When Aldrin finds this random fallen, he's like, "Oh my God, what happened to you? Clearly, a stupid guardian did this. I I can fix this though. I I wish that you were, I wish that you would live again." And so, uh, Riven grants the wish, bringing back uh, Fickroll. And so it kind of seems like Fickroll already had that power before Aldrin even got involved. But it was specifically... Um, In one of the cards, it does talk about how Fickroll did get the power from Aldrin. Yeah. Yeah. Does it? Where does it? Which card is that? I remember that. It's, it's got to be in the Forsaken Prince. Either way, this is about Variks. We're well, we can, we can talk about Fickroll and the Forsaken Prince. And well, okay, but that was kind of that that was an interesting good, thing. Yeah, that was a good key to where Varric's motivation lies and, hmm. and and what could potentially happen. I mean, if we were to theorize what's next, what could happen with Varric as a as a uh, as a character? Mm-hmm. Well, then, also then, then what, what would you say using what this information? What would you say Varric is going to do next? Because essentially, just to to kind of like close close off that that bit and and bring it up to um what's coming next Varix let out aldrin let out the scorned barons let the prison break happen ultimately getting Cade killed Varix did not like Cade, so he's probably not going to feel bad about that um and he flees he leaves the warden servitor ai with uh a bunch of dialogue and it's just like running a test it kind of goes crazy thinks it is Varix. that's not that important but Varix ultimately is trying to bring back his people so what's uh what's everyone's theory about that? Let's just like open it up to the theories of of where Varric specifically is going. Well, I mean, I, I feel as though one of the things that I think is interesting. I don't know if it's I don't know if this is answering your question or not, but I feel as though there is going to be some connection between Varix and Mithrax. Yeah, absolutely. There has to be. So Mithrax is the captain that we spare. Canonically. Um, yeah. Canonically, yeah. Whether whether you spared him or not, he is he is the captain that that we that we spared on uh, That's a Titan, true. right? Hmm. There is a card where yeah. Varix is talking to Kate Six and says that we have our ways, like Tanix and Mithrax. And Tanix is known for being revived, so it kind of sounds like the Fallen mm-hmm. have a way of reviving Mithrax. So we might have actually killed Mithrax. Mm. Tanix was being revived because he was more machine than Fallen, though. Right, but in his cloak, because otherwise, still accomplished. Well, but like otherwise, if if any random Fallen can just be revived, Krask was killed. Ha 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 ha. All right, well let's revive him. Right, like that would that would be the reaction if it was that simple to do. Well, don't yeah. they kind of do that? Already? It makes it seem like when he was talking to Cade that it is possible and it is something that they can do. So why, why was need, that mentioned? That is in the most loyal. Um... <laughs> but so then what were you, what were you saying there, uh, Rhino? You started to say something while we oh, look for this. No, I was just adding. I was just saying. I was adding to his point of his argument that if Tanix could be revived, well, we get a little glimpse. Into, yeah. We get a little glimpse into the, to where Tanix origin with D one's cloak about his endless troves of arms and legs and hearts. And then, you know, it goes blank. So there's something mysterious there that was driving, you know, the creation of Tanix. You know, a lot of people say that he was, Right. It, it, in the end, it said he was more machine than anything, right? Um, mm-hmm. But there was there was pieces of of uh, of living tissue somewhere uh, originally that he was cobbled together. I always thought of Tanix as a puppet, anyway. But that's just mm-hmm. my own, that's just my own crazy theory. But no, if I had to say what Varix was going to do or what's going to happen next, is I I would speculate that he's going to let. Like, like we were trying to find out where is he going to come up with an army or, or people or fallen to restore them back to whatever he feels is right. 
what he has what does he have to choose from there's not much so he kind of has to go cobble together the fallen and and restore them in a way and if fallen are have a history of restoring each other and uh and reviving one another he, i just don't know, see any actual history outside of tanix specifically and like one person who is more machine than he was fallen being revived is a special case. I I, I haven't seen anything else except well, we know for the specific thing from the card. It's some kind of luck, and it's um, Varric saying that Fickrul lives, and Cade saying no, he's dead. I put a hot one right through his chest. Yeah. So like seen on Earth, I have about... knowledge. I have information. Mm-hmm. You know, looks and you have ways like Mithrax, like Tanix. Right. And now, and now we know about Riven. Okay, but see, like, but we already know that Fickroll wasn't dead. He was dying. So, like Tanix, like Mithrax, when Tanix was killed by Cade, he was carted off by his, his, like, fallen. So, it was probably a very similar case where it's like, oh, well, he's not going to survive that one. It's a fatal wound. But fallen have ways of surviving fatal wounds, not death. Because otherwise, again, know, why would why would know, he care about Krask being dead? If if Krask could just be revived, he would just revive him. It would be as simple as that. We also know of Archon priests, and we know of one that was taken. But being taken, uh, well, I know, I'm not sure what point you're trying to make because no, like, being, I'm just saying being... that there 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 are so many different avenues that that could potentially happen. I mean there. You know, that, that's the problem is like in one particular part in, in uh, Forsaken, I forget which card it was, but it talks about the evolution, you know, as a whole for, for the scorn in Forsaken. And it talks about, uh, you know, the Barons and Tanix and uh, somebody else, but I can't remember. And, and it calls, it, it already calls him a scorned Baron. I don't know. I mean, I guess going, so... I don't. I. Uh, I understand that Mithrax, canonically, is alive, and the if we you know if we forget about the possibility that he has been resurrected. You know we we know Tanix could be resurrected. We know Fickrel was resurrected, but I think it's it's safe very to different. say, yeah, it is. They are very differently, but I think it's safe to say that generally speaking, Elixir can't be resurrected. They're not like. They're not like guardians. Yeah. Okay. So maybe resurrected is a different terminology, and that should just be a parallel. But for the fallen, they have something. <laughs> well, well. I mean, let's let, whether they do or not. I feel as though somebody was making a point about. Well, I can't remember how we got onto this tangent. To be honest, um. But, but what is it that? You know, I I think it's going to be really interesting seeing the, you know, there are currently a handful of Elixni leaders. There's there's Varix, who is is kind of a leader almost through his history. Mm. There's Mithrax. But no Fallen would follow Varix. Like that's... Well, but, may, but maybe some would. You know, I, I feel as though it's being built up rather that no fallen would follow Varix because it's it's so being I, said that he's like unrespected. Not respected. I, th- I feel as though obviously none of the scorn would would follow Varix and no, Varix wouldn't not. wouldn't want to lead the scorn. Oh, I feel as though it here it is. Here it well, is. hang on a second yeah, before before we yeah. I, just, I feel as though the house of the house of dusk have no interest in following Varix, and they're they're. I don't know if that's the right term to use. It's it's not used very much within the the law, but they're the 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 main house. They're the only house that we've seen in Destiny Two, really, other than Spider. I don't expect Spider and Varix. You know, even though they're kind of on the same side, they're not really. They don't allies. have the same. Yeah, they're not allies. They they are, you know, begrudgingly. I could see them having a, a, a kind of a begrudging truce at best but there is still fallen on you know i wouldn't be surprised if there was still fallen on the moon mm. like I, I i i would 
If if there is any former house that the Varys house of could exile leave, abandon the houses. They they arguably they would also be like one that wouldn't follow. So you have, let's say you yeah. have you have exile, you have spiders followers, and you have Varix, and you have Scorn, and c- c- would we say that there's still uh, splicers out there? Uh, Maybe. So I, like, I don't think so. Of of these so, of these like groups of fallen, the only ones hmm. that might follow Varix are the house of dusk but what about i mean is there any maybe maybe there's no evidence that they're still around i know a lot of the fallen houses there was that grimlock card at the end of destiny one that suggested that all of the all of the fallen banners had been taken down Mm -hmm. Um, that's what i mean but but is there any evidence that the house of winter might still be around house of winter got absorbed by the house of wolves yeah that's what we were saying that the first oh yeah i do remember us having that. so it was it's kings and devils mm. which are hand in hand winter into wolves and kings so kings and wolves became house of dusk or wolves mm. were eradicated kings were the only ones left and king's devils yeah. became dusk mm. so and all I think that's there, left there is was, dusk because even then the was, devils became splicers. Like, there was some. God, they were there was something that that I think said that the. Well, I know a lot of the. The barons were, were they in house exile? At the some point? the guardian, uh, not guardian. The uh, game informer article said that all the scorned barons, including Fickroll, were house of mm. exile rejects. Like they were mm. kicked out of the house of exile. So that was already that's already wrong right there because Fickrel yeah. is a wolf. Fickrel, yeah. Although I guess technically he could have gone from wolf to exile to rejected. Yeah. But that's possible. Because the wolves were eradicated after the taken war. Like it's shown in the grimoire that they yeah. are gone. Yeah. So, that, makes so sense that those that were left just went to house of exile. So the houses that we know. Before everything began, there was um, Scar, Wolves, King, Judgment, um, Stone, Winter. Well, not counting Stone. Like I'm saying, like in our system. Oh, I point. apologize. Sorry. Um, uh, where was I? Winter, Devils, Kings. Like seven houses. Mm-hmm. So. Kings and Devils are one and one. Winter was destroyed so bad that they joined the Wolves, who were also destroyed. So Winter and Wolves are just, are just gone. Uh, Scar we never saw because Scar was also destroyed by the wolves long ago, and then there's Exile who kind of sits alone. Mm-hmm. So I think Exile was part of the was part of the hint in the Forsaken expansion. What do you mean? Um, well, just part of the hint is the 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 new the new fallen threat. You know, they kind of tied in with the the scorn in the prison, and uh, what was his name that accidentally fell into the Hellmouth? Hyrax. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. Like, obviously, some of the barons, at least some of the barons, came from exile. Yeah. But so, like, of what's left, there's only the House of Dusk because the devils either became splicers or they would have followed with the kings to become House of Dusk. Everything else was eradicated. So there's the House of Dusk who still tries to follow the old way of houses, but the, it's, it, the time of houses is over. Right. You know, so even so, then, so they might have just the, like said, "Screw it, we don't. We're like, we're we're like exile. We're not following anyone." Varys is gonna have a hard time getting people to follow him. Can mm. I, can I point to it the the Lauren tree real quick? Yeah, that yeah, of me, course. That made me go down this route. It was uh, I found it. It was a blind eye toward tomorrow, and it was in in around the end where it talks about the barons and tannics and the splicers are each and in all individual dangers driven by their own ambition mm-hmm. they're more likely to wage war with one another than see their commonality yet are they not of a, are they not of a kind are they not evidence of something greater wending its way through the fallen's dying culture are they not the warning signs of a new terrible evolution mm. yeah so like the 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 barons follow Fickroll, but that doesn't make them on the same side, right? Hmm. They just they just, they just happen to follow Fickroll. But if any if if the trickster ever got in Hyrax's way, Hyrax would kill the trickster, and so on for any of them, arguably. Um, so here's here's just like a completely fucking out there theory that I'm gonna toss out. <laughs> it is 
like a- after we discuss all that, it does not seem like Varix is going to get anyone to follow him. But it also sounded like he was like leaving. Like he wasn't looking here. Mm. It sounds like he's going to find other Elixni and maybe bring them back or maybe say, I'm done with this place. I don't want the traveler. I don't want any of that. I'm done. And like, maybe we'll we'll just hear about him from now on. You know, maybe Maybe. this is a random thought. That would be sad, but you know, there's also bug huggers hanging out somewhere. (laughs) That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. So just uh, um, maybe Ephrodite's colony of pacifists. Oh yeah, they 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 did get called bug huggers, didn't they? By uh, who was it? Shiro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's that's the throwback. Holy shit. Bug but um, in the in the last in the last card in the most loyal book, uh, one of the last lines is um, nowhere else to go, no one else to be here. He drew himself up to his full height, and so I become Varix, the Kel, house judgment and void to the Elixni people. No choice, he repeated, chuckling deep in his throat. His voice was calm. Elixni must rise. Yes. So it it, it, does, it doesn't sound like he's like I'm gonna go to Earth and try to get the house of dusk to follow me. It sounds like he's taken off, like he's leaving. Oh, I would. I mean, it just sucks because House Dust could be be such a good ally if he could just somehow convince them. Well, I mean, if he if he goes out of the system, if he leaves the system and finds another group of Elixni, and he uh-huh. convinces them to join him to to relive the old ways, and he comes back with them, he can come to get the House of Dusk and say fallen in this system we are making our own future and like that could be a whole dlc of itself you know like varix returning and coming with like ancient elixir with her it could essentially be like how the awoken um came in the in the dark age like what if he comes like after like stuff really goes down in the system like he leaves shit hits the fan for us and we are like dying like we are like barely coming on and Varix comes back and he's like oh well i found my people we're gonna help you we're gonna go the high road we're gonna forgive what you've done we're gonna help you and we're gonna get you back on your feet well i mean that would be cool i mean it's not going very well for us at the moment too i mean we lost Cade and and uh, zavala's looking a little shaky mm. <laughs> do you think so in that last card that last page of the the most loyal book it says, um, as he walked, he made two recordings to be sent out by the prison's relays once he was away. For the first, he disabled his voice synth and began, in the deep resonance of high speak, to give commands. Oh, and I've co- I haven't copied the, the right line. <laughs> uh, he didn't know how many would answer Judgment's call, but he had to try. Yeah. Which kind of implies that he's asking the prisoners of the prison of elders the the, the fallen the mm. elixni in the prison who haven't been converted corrupted. into yeah. yeah corrupted come and join me yeah i don't know and how then many after that we see would. a vandal follow him hmm. you see the next line after that says a vandal in wolf colors saluted him as he passed hmm. yeah. oh neat yeah you're right he says one follower. Well, one person can change a mind. Two people can change the world. Hmm. Well, I'm excited to see wherever Varix's story goes. Varix is always a very favorite character of mine because the Elixir have always been my favorite alien race to, to learn about and really dive deep into their culture. Um, that feels like a pretty good place to uh, wrap it up. We're about at our time. Uh, Sounds good. Does anyone have any like closing statements they want to say? Anything that's really got to bring up about Varix? If he looks neat, great again. <laughs> bring Mega. bring Tanix back for Festival of the Lost. That'd be funny. <laughs> so uh, are we are we pretty agreed? Like, if Festival of the Lost like actually brings some stuff, there's a whole page in the Triumphs for um, events. I'd imagine there's got to be like some lore coming with Festival yeah. of the Lost, right? Yeah, I would expect so. Like, I hope there's more though. Yeah, I I would be a little disappointed if they like knock it out of the park with the the initial release, <laughs> and then they're like, "But nobody cares about events, right?" And we're like, "No, we do." <laughs> Please. I 
I feel as though really, I know we, we've mentioned this a few times, but to to kind of hammer home the point, Bungie have really turned a corner. Yeah. In terms of the full three sixty. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, I mean, I mean, obviously the law in every Destiny expansion has been has been good, mm. but it's kind of it's varied. You know, it's it's been it's been ups and downs. Yeah. There are times when it's felt as though we as law fans have been forgotten about. Yeah. But it feels like I'm I'm just overwhelmed in a in a good way. Yeah. With the with the level of of detail and it's not it's not just the depth it's the breadth and the depth you mm-hmm. know like like yeah when when d2 yeah. came out it was like wow this is really deep about the cabal but everything else <laughs> is just like super scattered and like non-existent yeah. whereas this it's like we got Varix, we got aldrin we got Cade, we got the awoken we got like so many yeah. stories that kind of all sit in a bubble Mm-hmm. but they're all so good too like yeah. like even if it's not very wide like even if we're not learning about like the hive it's still like but we learned so many facets of this it's not just yeah and then callus did this and then callus did that and then callus did it's like oh my god like i love callus but come on shut up i'm sick of him now. <laughs> like, yeah but i think as well though that the way that the the way that the lore is i know that i know that like literally speaking the lore is in the game in that you can read the lore in the game mm-hmm. but i don't think there's ever been any point in the history of Dis- of, of destiny where there has been too much the, well no no, no I, the, the the game is about the law yeah it feels it feels like the game is about the law now and like you know the blind well is like you know like it it's it, there are so many parts of the Dreaming City where it's like, yeah, this is this is all this is all taken from the law. Yeah, this is what R- I read rather about. than yeah. the other way around. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, like the right. blind it's well. Like... It was like when they were constructing the blind well, and they say it's going to need three weeks of paracausal energies to charge this, and then it's like three weeks of charging it, and then we get the shattered throne, and it's like, oh yeah. my fucking god, like that's what that's what yeah. it said. That's what it said in the lore, and it's actually yeah. doing it in the game too. Whereas like normally and... it just feels kind of disconnected. And there's so many nice, like the the having the corsairs spread spread throughout the Dreaming City mm-hmm. is instead amazing. of the troll beacons. Yeah. yeah, and and like the Techians, like when the Techians sense. appeared, I was like, this is abs-, you know, like I, I remember watching the Taken King um, cutscene and being like, all right, so that's what the Techians look like. Yeah. Hopefully, we, hopefully we'll get to meet them. No. Well, I mean, you know, and then and then they all get killed. Yeah, but you know, like I, it, it would have been the Harbibis. It's oh, it's kind of just... it's kind of funny. It's like in the Taken King, they all die, or it's like the the ones that we see in the Taken King all die, and then the ones that are left all die behind the scenes, and then it's like, oh, well, now they're all dead. But then we save three of them, and it's like, okay, well, yeah. now there's three of them. It's the so writers I, are up to something for sure. Yeah. I, I I love it so much. Either way, yeah. On um, next week on Tuesday, the sixteenth, Festival of Loss is dropping. It sounds like it's a three-week event. It says that it's going to end in a murder, based on the Vidoc. Um, what the hell was it? The Vidoc, uh, Forsaken, and Forsaken in the Future, something like that. There's a Vidoc where it actually shows where the um, Solstice of Heroes uh, statue was. It's going to be a big tree with a bunch of candles on it or engrams in the tree candles on the ground. And, um, there's a guardian kneeling in front of a picture, which is like clearly master Ives. Like it is literally his, is when you went and visit master Ives, it even shows the wrinkles on his, on his coat. Like they just mm-hmm. took, they just took that and made it a holograph. So I don't know who killed master Ives, but we're going to find out. I hope, um, it was Colonel mustard. Yeah, I think it was Rahul. Four and out of forty. See, no, 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 no. Hear me out. There was that Rahul. (laughs) Rahul killed Master Ives because he uh, Ives was like Rahul sent that letter to Master Ives like, hey, you know, like we should we should work together. And I was like, nah, fuck you. And then Rahul, in a fit of rage, I'm calling it for like the next episode, in a fit of rage, 
kills Master Ives, and we go and we solve the murder, and then Rahul gets thrown into prison, and then Tyra comes from the farm to the tower, and now there's literally no reason to go to the farm. (laughs) That makes sense. To close up the farm, just to be done with that place. Like, get Tyra out of there. Ives is dead, Rahul's in jail, Tyra's our cryptarch. I think Rahul was framed. 1,000 deaths are not enough. By Tyra Khan. Ooh. (laughs) Tyra Khan killed Master Ives because she knew that after that letter, Rahul would be the prime suspect. He would be the number one suspect, yeah. And getting Rahul in jail would get her out of the farm. All I know is that Grandma Eva better come back. She is so sick of the farm. Oh, yeah, Eva. She's the best. So I hope we get a bunch of lore and we can come back on the 21st, (laughs) two weeks from now, the 21st at 9.15 a.m. Eastern, and we can talk about the Festival of the Lost. We can talk about the people that have died, like Cade. Perfect timing. Mm. And all that stuff. Dia, Dia de las Muertes. Arcade. Yeah, because Festival of the Lost is is like an amalgamation amalgamation. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of of a bunch of like Golden Age uh, c- celebrations as well as or post pre Golden Age as well as post collapse. It just kind of formed into one one big thing. It's not Halloween, but it's kind of Halloween. There's gonna be a costume party. Do you? Th- they said costume party, not just masks. Do you think around. we're getting like full body? Dude. Can I run around as literally Crota and go do Escalation Protocol and grab the sword and just start slamming shit? <laughs> it would be great if you. Skull. You know, like the masks were helmets that, that had skull. like, that had like one light or whatever, one power level. Yeah. I don't care. That, but that would be really good if you had costumes and so your light level dropped to like one. But if I could... have a six hundred. <laughs> If you, have, if you have 600 weapons... Can I still do Escalation Protocol, or will I be useless? Like, it's only, like, 3, <laughs> Probably, three what, yeah. like, 360? Yeah. I can do it. My team can carry me. I don't care. I'll figure it out. Oh. Bye. Okay, oh. bye! Yeah, bye, <laughs> Luck is goodbye, Eva. Bye! Um, bye. Follow Loose Cannon at Loose Cannon Show on Twitter for more updates and stuff. Uh... Uh, the the show is now on YouTube, uh, Loose Cannon, I think show, and uh, Anchor, Spotify, all that stuff. Bye.